for your work from Belfast. My dad got me the start. Then my brother's after me. You could hear the noise from where we live, but nothing prepared you for the sight of the people. It took me to work from 401. That's what we called her. We knew she'd be the largest passenger ship in the world, but we didn't call her Titanic then. I was there from the beginning. I watched the ship race play a few blocks. We sat by doing blocks on the ship they start with. Then the key on top of it, like a back bone. And the frame was attached to that, like a skeleton. Workshops everywhere. And it took weeks to find our way around. There'd be workshops for every trade we ever heard of. Painters, steel makers, coppersmiths, boiler makers, cabinet makers. I even learned a bit about French policy nothing. Now the worst is a fine place to work, but dangerous. Every ship crossed the river, and there'd be lots of injuries to sail. I was in the engine works for a while. Very well equipped it was. That's where we built the triple expansion engine. Two of them, each as high as a three-story house. I worked in the frame bending shop. You had heat squeeze beams in the furnace, then hit them on the slabs that cast iron, and hammer them curved. It was still work. You had to bend them more than you needed, because the frame straightened out a little when it cooled. The shell tape that made up a hole weighed up to four and a half tons. <laughs> they were cornered on the draft. The two of them were overlapped on the edges. Some were wheels, one after another. We called it clincher. One of the four men told me years ago, that's how you built these ships. I work at the heater, boy. You have to heat the rivets on a wee pit. You pump the bellows till the rivet was quite hot. Then you get a hold of it with your tongs and throw it up to the catcher. And he put it in the hole in the pit for the holder up. There were two of us on the other side of the plate for the holder up. We had to hammer the rivets to fill the hole before it turned down red. The double bottom. That's a wee space we call the tanks made up of steel plates. The rest of the river squad all had to fit into that gap. One of the four men would check each other with a special hammer. It made a ringing sound. It would have to go back. He had to afterwards. I get scared working down in that double bottom. You only had candles for light. But the constant hammering against the shell plate. You could hear it all over Belfast. Some of those boys ended up stone deaf, so did it. We were paid 31 bob a week. The heater boy and catcher got 16 bob. But we all worked the same 54 hours. The other deck was seen through and part of the strength of the ship. There's no straight lines on the ship. And when you look down the weather deck, you can see the sheer of the hull. The stern frame had to be strong enough to take the rudder turning in heavy seas. You'd have all these timbers and guy wires to steady the frame, and men scurrying around like ants underneath. When we came to launch day, I was torn between pride and fear. The standing line for coated and tallow, train oil and soft soap. So the ship would slide and they shifted their weight off the block. That was the most dangerous part. And the shipwrights were not going to weigh the last prop. They were on the compression, you see, and the sliding weight would be released by the hydraulic trigger. One hundred thousand people watched the launch. One paid a ball to sit in the reserve seated. The rest are hands laid on. Then we all went off to the pub to wish her well. Daphne was proud to be an A-Led man that day. And Titanic is a pride of Belfast.